This is going to act as a sealer on this absorbent craft paper. And then I'm not painting all the way up to my dividing lines because I've already resolved a lot of that drawing. So I don't necessarily want to do it again. I want to get a flat base. You know, I think I'm going to go ahead while I've got this color and just do her suit. I'm going to have, here's the plan, I'm going to have um, doodles in the scarf that she's twirling around her. I need to go ahead and do that shoe. Anywhere I don't want the print of the paper to show through needs to have a coat. This is Liquitex Gesso because my Micron pens and my um, hello permanent Sharpies will work great for the doodle. Okay, Gonza Tombies. I want a Carmen uh, Cad Red color, and I want a little bit of this Cad Yellow color, and I need a whole bunch of water. Now I want a little bit of green. And green. Why green do you think? Let's go with a little bit of that. That was that one is a little bit too blue. Green is the complement of red. So if you want to tone down your tone down the red skin tone and you want to make that curve, you want to cool that curve down. So I'm gonna come in here. Very carefully, I'm going to add some green into the shadow areas. And I'm going to come right up in here and then bring it right on up here into that hand. Okay, capiche? Do the same thing down here. And the reason I wanted to paint a ballerina is because the muscles. She's really got some good ones, too. You'd have to. There is no way I could do this. I never took dancing lessons. Got a little bit carried away right there with the water. I want that to be real slight. Okay, down here, honey bunny, we got a big muscle group right there. And it kind of does that. It goes down to her knee. Now this is what we call a foreshortened leg. Because the way the leg, her, her leg is bending back, you have to create that with values. Cool recedes, so you know you've got to have quite a bit of cool down here on this leg to make that bend up. And here we have a knee.
Okay, rapidograph 0.35 and a Signo by Uniball and the Sharpies. We'll see how this does on the... Now I'm going to do what we do in freeform doodling. As I grow as an artist, I find that when I drill down into, like, like this for example, I started doing this freeform doodling in my chair. That's my winter spot. And it's really a good exercise because all the doodling I've done is coming back into my art. For example, this is a realistic, well, you know, fairly realistic painting of a ballerina. And I'm doing doodling as part of the art rather than just an end unto itself. And I think that's kind of fun to explore a technique and then let it bleed over into your other work. Really tempted to go get back in my chair. It's uh, turned off winter again. But I want to do this project. paper. I took a, what did I take? I took a gel pen. This is something I got at Target or somewhere, fashion gel, metallic. And I'm going to spider web over the doodles. Again, to make it look gossamery. And we'll see where we get with that. So I've dipped into my um, acrylics here. This is the Ceram coat.